If you do have a cell phone on you, please make sure it's silent or turned off. That way it stays quiet in the courtroom. Also, we just ask that there's no talking in the courtroom. The reason we're asking to try and keep quiet is to preserve the record. That way we preserve everybody's rights. The Supreme Court has ordered the courts to try and keep a recorded record, an accurate record, and to do that we just ask for quiet. So it does, if it does need to be reviewed by either the defendant, the prosecutor, or a judge of the Supreme Court for that matter, they can hear what's being said. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, sir. Thank you for saying please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I found it's always better to be polite and you get a better response back. Lies yes, indeed. I have a question for you yes, sir. about the recordings. Yes. After a certain amount of time, they go up online. Anybody um, that I know? do not know if the court actually puts them online. I do know they can be requested by the different parties. Right. Yeah. Okay. Aside from that, I couldn't give you. Costs like twenty-five bucks. Answer. Yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. Which you know, today in the age of MP3s and email attachments, is ridiculous. Oh, man. Oh. Right. Chris Cavello. Court in New Hampshire. Are you independent? If the parties are ready to proceed. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. State Paul's Sergeant John Patty. You know, before I make my first witness, I'm going to make a pretrial motion uh, for sequestration of any witnesses that tend to be called by the defense. Have your witnesses been sequestered? I only have one witness here today, sir. Do you have any witnesses? I only have one witness as well. Is your witness in the room? Yes. Um, would, could, could the witness please stand for a moment so I could identify him? Um, if you're being called as a witness, there's a rule called Rule 615. It is a rule on sequestration which says that if you're going to be called as a witness, that both parties in a criminal case shall, giving no discretion to the court, be sequestered. Please do not discuss the testimony of either yourself or any other witness with, um, don't allow it to be discussed with you with any component, okay? If you just wait outside, sir, um, we'll call you in when it's your turn to be testifying, all right? Yeah. Do you need someone designated to you? On one issue, uh, uh, could I know that the witnesses that will be called today by the prosecution? He says, yes, I'll call them. Okay. Counsel, you're going to swear with Thank you, sir. So please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the pains and penalties of perjury. Thank you. Please be seated. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is John Patty. Last name is spelled P A T T I. Mr. Patty, how are you employed? Uh, let's see, Manchester as a police officer. How long have you been so employed? Been with Manchester Police for 16 years. To which division are you assigned? Patrol. What is your current rank? Sergeant. Were you on duty? On June 4th of this year? Yes, it was. At or around the early mid afternoon of that, that day, what was going on outside the Manchester Police Department? Uh, there was a protest outside the Manchester Police Department. Can you describe this protest to the court? Uh, approximately 20 or 30 people uh, standing in front of the police department on Chestnut Street, both on the east and west side. Um, some carrying signs, some writing with chalk on the building and sidewalk. At some point during the course of the afternoon and the early evening hours, were there arrests made out of uh, this protest? Yes, there were. Okay. Remember how many, approximately? Six, maybe eight. Okay. They all come at one time or they come in separate instances? Separate times. Okay.
at some point, did you request the Texas website side to a photograph in area? Yes, we did. Okay. Why was that, sir? Um, some of the writing that had been placed on the building on the Tang Wall and um, sidewalk outside of the police station, we decided that um, because arrests were made um, regarding the writing on the walls, we decided to uh, photograph the writings as evidence. Okay. And those arrests are already occurred? Yes. What happened when you went outside the, to uh, begin photographing uh, what you determined to be evidence? Um, we were met by a, a group of people that were still outside protesting. Okay. What is the approximate si size of this group? Uh, about 20 people. Okay. What exactly were they doing outside? Um, mostly standing in front of the police department. As I said, someone carrying signs. Um, the chalking had pretty much stopped at that point. Were you alone when you exited the police department? No. Well, it's exited with you. Uh, there were a couple of detectives with me, and as well as other uniformed personnel. Okay. Did you address this group that was outside? Yes, um, they were told numerous times that they needed to, um, they could stay on the sidewalk, but in order to stay on the sidewalk, they needed to keep moving. We have a city ordinance uh, that um, <clears throat> prohibits people standing on the sidewalk for your breast, which they were doing at various times, and that was explained to them. Okay. How, how many times was this explained to them? Objection. Um, the question is overly vague. The uh, witness has already established that there were people on both the east and west sidewalks, uh, and now he's explaining what he was uh, he was uh, getting into, what he was saying to the group. Um, unless the witness is capable of talking to people in all of those areas at once, I think there needs to be more specificity, uh, especially with regard to the question as far as who's being talked to. I'm, I'm not sure I understand which of the rules of evidence you're, you're quoting here, sir. Uh, I'm objecting to the, the vagueness of uh, the question as far as who it is. It's, it seems a group's been established and the prosecutor is asking what uh, Officer Patty said to the group and I think it, it should be established who the group is, where they are, because it's already been testified that they were in locations on one and another side of the street. So that would be considerably two separate locations. If I'm understanding the objection, the objection is as to the foundation, Mr. Moore. All right. I believe the foundations are set in this matter. The testimony, as I recall, there was a group of 20 people standing outside the police department, uh, maybe outside of the sidewalk area, uh, standing there, some holding signs. The chalking is pretty much stopped. Uh, that is the group I'm referring to, using the pronoun group. Um, I believe the question was that there's been a proper foundation laid as to whom the uh, statements were related to. I guess then the issue becomes this. Do you understand what he's asking as a question? Do I run? Yes. Yes. All right, then you may answer the question. I'm overruling the objection. Thank you, sir. The uh, directives to keep moving were um, geared towards the group, both in front of the station and requests were made for the people on the other side of the sidewalk as well. All right. Concentrate on the group in front of the station. How many times did you ask them to keep moving? Uh, two or three times. Okay. And you described the manner in which you asked them to keep moving. Um, well, there were um, verbal requests by me, um, you know, spoken loud enough where they could be heard <coughs> for the group. <coughs> and are you familiar with a Garrett Ian? Yes, sir. How are you familiar with him? Uh, he was um, one of the people who was participating in the protest uh, that day as well. He was one of the ones that was standing on the sidewalk. When you say the sidewalk, which sidewalk are you referring to? Uh, directly in front of the police station. Okay. And best of your memory, was he present when you gave these initial orders? Yes. Do you recall where he was when you gave the initial order? No. How were you dressed that day, sir? 
And then the full police uniform. So, so, so what you wearing today? As I am today. Be concentrated on the, uh, I'll strike that. Just be clear, which sidewalk was uh, Mr. Ian on? Um, when I encountered him, um, maybe he was on the, would be the east sidewalk, the one directly in front of the police station. Okay. Is that the same sidewalk that the group that you were addressing was on? Yes. What happened when you asked the, uh, when you made your request? Um, mostly, or I said initially that they didn't move. Um, it was at the time that we needed to uh, begin taking photographs of the scene. Um, just prior to that, there was a uh, subject I know through my work experience who had been walking northerly on the sidewalk um, encountered this group of people standing in front of them. Um, and across the street, uh, directly in front of the group. Why was that important to you, Sergeant? Well, it speaks to the, um, the meaning of the city ordinance where they need to keep moving uh, in order to allow pedestrian traffic. How close did the subject get to the crowd? 10, 10 15 feet. After uh, noting the subject crossing the other side of the street, what happened next, Sergeant? Um, well, again, throughout our contact that day, they were told numerous times they needed to keep moving uh, on this particular occasion. Detectives um, were ready to begin photographing. Um, so in order to uh, clear the area for them to photograph, a uh, number of officers walked towards the group, explained to them again uh, they need to continue to move and clear the area out so they could be uh, photographs taken. Did the group move? Well, <clears throat> they, they did move, um, but it seemed they would only move um, as, you know, as the police officers were moving, um, that began to move the group. Uh, verbal requests didn't seem to work. What happened next, sir? Um, eventually, uh, the uh, group of people made their way past the uh, area that we had considered to be uh, crime scene for the pictures. Um, and then after they reached a certain point, um, they again stopped and stood still on the sidewalk. When they reached the second location, where was that, sir, exactly? Uh, it's north of the actual uh, physical police building. It's an area we call the north parking lot of the police station. Okay. What happened once you, uh, you, you folks arrived at the north parking lot? Well, at this point I realized that um, it seemed as though the only way that they were going to keep moving is if we were going to keep um, hurting them out of the area. So at that point I made the decision to um, other officers there to arrest those that were standing. So. Prior to making your Prior to making arrest, did you uh, issue any further uh, verbal instructions? They had been warned plenty of times. What happened next, sir? Um, there were, I believe, three people out of this particular group that were arrested. Um, I physically arrested Mr. Ian. Did you recognize Gary Ian important today? Yes, I do. If I might describe it as well. That's stable or in a uh, black suit coat. Your Honor, I understand the status of the uh, matter. I'm still going to ask the record reflect that the witness that the record reflect that the witnesses identified the defendant. Other than the court personnel and yourself and the witness, there's one person inside the bar who is seated at the defense table. Thank you, sir. Going back for a second, Sergeant. During your uh, contrary being contacted with Mr. Ian, had you had prior contact with Mr. Ian? Prior to putting some handcuffs? Yes. Okay. Can you describe what that contact was? Um, throughout the 
event, Your Honor, um, Mr. Ian was usually standing behind somebody else um, photographing or filming what was occurring. I, I recall him having a camera um, on top of a tripod. He seemed to be carrying the tripod and photographing or filming uh, what was occurring. Do you specifically recall Mr. Ian being present when you gave instructions to keep moving? Yes. This interaction with this, this group, including the defendant, what effect did it have on your the ability of the police to photograph the evidence in this matter? Um, <clears throat> but again, as I said, the only way it was possible for us to photograph this area is um, to actually physically walk the group away from the area, area rather than rather than them moving. Um, upon our verbal request. Eventually, um, like I said, they did leave the area as we escorted them past it. Thank you, sir. I didn't for the questions for you at this time. I'm going to have some questions for you. Sure. Floor is yours. Sergeant Patty, throughout your testimony, uh, you stated that the group was told numerous times to keep moving. Yes. And uh, you stated that there were people in different areas around where the supposed group you were talking about was situated, correct? I don't understand the way you phrased that. There were people also across the street, there were people also down the street, there were people also on the opposing street corner. Yes. Do you recall what time the arrest took place, the, the final three arrests, myself and the two others? Mm, off the top of my head, I want to say um, 7 o'clock. Okay. That's, that's just a guess, though, off the top of my head. Did you uh, fill out the police reports uh, with the time accurately? Or, did, or who was in charge of filling out the police reports with the time? I don't know what you mean by, by time. I did a report on your arrest, that's what you mean. Okay. Permission to approach the witness with your arrest reports from the discovery. Okay. These are from the discovery. States that uh, two of the people who were arrested at the same time as myself were arrested about two hours later, and I was wondering if Sergeant Patty could account for why there would be uh, why there would be that much variation, considering that he ordered the two other arrests as well as myself and the other. Um, 
Council? All right. The pending question is subject wants to ask why there's a variance. I have no objection to that question. Mark Bull. The fact not in evidence at this moment is the time of the arrest of the other individual. So since you're not objecting to the ultimate question, the individual then has established 401 relevance to the individual answering the pending question. Sir, you may answer the pending questions. Uh, can you account for the differences in times between the arrests on the arrest report? Yes. Excuse me. I overruled the objection to him answering the team okay, sorry. about the other arrest. Okay, so he hasn't answered that question. So you're going to let him answer that before you ask your ultimate question, okay? Okay. I actually don't remember what the, the, the question that you had asked was what was the time of the arrest of someone named Pete Ayer? Right. So there's a little bit of variation between the times of Peter and Charles Nectar in about a few minutes. Yes. But there is a large variance between those two arrests and myself, according to the arrest report. Yes. Can you account for the difference? Yeah, this is just the time that was put in by the booking officer. The arrests were made at the same time. Um, time of arrest is not an element yet to prove in this case. Um, you may recall that there was a very busy night in booking. There were some people um, related to your group who were not cooperative. Um, so they delayed the booking process. Related to my group, they were not cooperative? Yes. Only people who were related to my group were not cooperative? You don't have to explain the object that much. Sir, two things. First, there's an issue about whether or not the microphone is going to pick you up. Okay. I allowed you to approach us. I'd, I'd be grateful if you just stand someplace, more or less, behind the microphone. You don't have to bend down because it'll pick you up just like it picks me up. Okay. But there's no need for you to be up there at this point. Um, now the objection, I was concerned about maintaining a record. I'm going to have to ask you to restate your objection. I'm not sure that he heard it, and I'm going to ask him to respond. Most certainly, Your Honor. The objections on relevance around the pending question before the court is were only members of mine who uncooperative, or members of the associated with me uncooperative. I feel it's the other behavior of any other person is relevant uh, to any of the elements of the offense that are before the court or the line of question that was previously established. All right. Sir? I'll withdraw. All right. You do remember uh, us interacting prior to placing me under arrest on June 4th, correct? Right. That question? You recall we did interact on a few occasions prior to me being placed under arrest on June 4th? Um, I do recall you being part of the group. Okay, do you recall our specific interactions inside or outside of the police station? No. Okay. Are you aware that most of our interactions that day were recorded? Yes. At any time uh, prior to placing me under arrest at the time that you did, did you attempt earlier to place me under arrest or anything? Your Honor, I'm check and I don't know if to place me under arrest earlier, depending on charges. All right. I, do you have a 401 relevance? Uh, I'd say it's relevant in that the I have a video showing an interaction with myself and Sergeant Patty. I could perhaps ask him questions about to make it relevant. Uh, as to whether or not he had, in fact, tried to arrest me earlier in the day. Uh, and so I'd like to inquire with him about that. Do I understand from what you just said that you're withdrawing the pending question and that you intend to ask other matters in order to make it relevant? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, if the pending question is, did he try to arrest me earlier, yes. Uh, well, right. I could withdraw that. All right, then, then you may proceed. You can ask him. Um, At this point, I'd like to show Sergeant Patty a video that I submitted to you as evidence of I'm not disclosing which video it is. I am going to object. One, on authentication. It's certain videos. I'm objecting the grounds that it's not a complete original. All right, well, 
can you show the video to him to see whether or not he has? Yep. Yeah, it's one that he uh, submitted in the discovery. Can you show him which one it is to find out? He needs to know what it is you're, you're proffering so he can make a proper objection if it is, in fact, an issue. This is the video which I recorded, which you guys downloaded and put in the discovery. So it's them being taken off, Sergeant Dugan coming back. Sergeant Patty coming out a second later. All right, so let's show this relevant at all. I still object on the ground authenticity. Well, authenticity is established by him asking if it's a true and accurate state. Yes. All right, so that only leaves the issue of the purpose behind showing, sir, under Rule 401, how is this relevant? Uh, well, I'm trying to inquire as to what Sergeant Patty's intentions were if he did, in fact, place me under arrest earlier in the day. Uh, and I have video of that interaction, and he could definitely view and comment on his actions for that. Okay, but the issue before the court at this point is whether or not you failed to follow a lawful order. So, Correct. Bob, how does it make a difference whether, you were, whether an effort had been made to arrest you earlier. Well, I'm also being given a lawful order. Suppose in this video, officers are giving me, they say, lawful orders, including Sergeant Patty. So it is direct evidence of my prior interactions with him following his lawful orders, which would be relevant to this case, showing that I have an established history in the video of following his orders as he gives them. Um, Mr. Mullen. Your Honor, the video, my understanding the video does not relate to the incident question at this point. It's from earlier in the day. I just not, therefore, it does not contain the order that's been given that's subject to question here. Uh, the idea that because the defendant gave, may have complied with the prior order, he didn't, he would comply with this one. I don't think that's appropriate at this point. I think it's, the video becomes more prejudicial than it's probative. I object further on the background now. I still object on the grounds it's not relevant since we're talking about a matter earlier in the day. This would be tantamount if the defendant got a speed ticket earlier in the day. I get it would not be relevant at all to this matter at hand. It doesn't go to any one of the elements. It doesn't make the matter more true or less true. Um, it is difficult for the court at this point to understand the temporal relationship. You folks have both used the words earlier in the day. Are we talking five minutes earlier, five hours earlier? What period of time? I'm unable, no court from the United States Supreme Court on down would be able to rule on that offer of proof as to whether or not it's relevant. I need, before I can understand whether or not it has 401 relevance, I have to know how much earlier you're speaking about. I can provide the specifics as to that. Okay, can, I needed that in an offer of proof before I'm going to... Uh, okay, this, I, this video I personally filmed so I can account for it, its authenticity with the raw videotape as well. All right, but, but what I'm saying is before I'm going to allow it to be seen, mm -hmm. you've got to tell me how much earlier we're speaking about. This was approximately two hours earlier. This was immediately preceding the first arrests. If the period of time is two hours, then I'm going to sustain the objection on relevance grounds. It would be evidence of prior good behavior, and that's not admissible to show conformance therewith. If it had been two minutes or five minutes earlier, then your argument would be well-founded that it would demonstrate that it was part of your course of conduct. So to the extent that we're talking about a temporal differential of two hours, it is anathema to the 404 series of rulings that exist, and I'm going to sustain the objection. Thank you, sir. So you don't recall ever trying to place me under... Uh, do you recall ordering myself out of the police station earlier in the day? Um, I know I ordered some people out. I don't recall a few of this specifically. Okay. 
Do you remember being asked if we would be allowed to film what was going on in a public space if we moved to a side that wasn't distracting? Not specifically. I mean, there were so many um, conversations and requests, I, I don't have a specific recollection of that. Okay, so I may have asked you if we would have been allowed to film off to the side if we were not disrupting anything. I don't know that. I can't answer that. Okay. Video good. <laughs> mm. Is it possible? Uh, how many? Do you remember? Uh, do you remember ordering anyone to shut the door of the police station as people were leaving it after they were ordered out? What is the relevance again? Sir, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about this. This appears to all have occurred on the sidewalk. Yes, this was as, as we were leaving the police station, the first time people were ordered out of the police station. But isn't that two hours earlier? Yes. Okay, so for those reasons, again, temporal significance is critical in terms of what is relevant, and I'm going to sustain the objection on that basis. Thank you, sir. So earlier in the day, you don't specifically recall me refusing any of your orders, correct? You aren't given a good point to object. Sir, so that's exactly what I had said. Can't come in. All right. You mentioned uh, a subject who got close to the, the group that was there and then crossed the street and then continued onward. Yes. Uh, and you believe that that uh, occurrence was relevant to the investigation? Yes. Okay, did you question that individual as to his intentions? No. Did you in any way record the fact that the sidewalk was blocked or make any way of marking it? Did you make did you make any uh, further attempt to document the fact that the sidewalk was blocked beyond noticing one person across the street? I, I was there. I saw it, and I referenced it in, in a police report. Okay. What was the subject's name that you referenced in the report? Jason Holdsworth. And what is your relationship to this individual? I guess I want to check on all of the relevant stuff around his relationship with Mr. Holdsworth. I guess I don't see how that is relevant. Will you make a... Well, I imagine it would be relevant if Mr. Holdsworth was possibly crossing the street to get away from Officer Patty. As I understand your proffer, the suggestion appears to be that there might be animus, which would be not to avoid the group, but to avoid the officer. So to the extent that he is proffering that as a cross-examination question, that would appear to, under the 401 rules of evidence, I'm going to allow that question. Yes, sir. Thank you. It, as I understand the question, and, and again, was there, would there be any animus uh, between you and that individual who would cause him to cross the street rather than as in consequence of the group that was across the street. Is that the question I understand you'd be asking? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yes, there is no problem with my relationship with Mr. Oldsworth, and uh, he actually walked past me towards the group of people that were on the sidewalk before crossing the street. Have you ever arrested him before? No. What response or uh, what action did you take in response to Mr. Holdsworth not being able to, allegedly not being able to get through the group? Um, yeah, there were orders given verbally for you guys to keep moving. Okay. You said you guys, so it was always to the group, never to a specific individual. Well, again, by city ordinance, it's three or more people, so it would have been a group of three or more people. Are you alleging that I did anything in any way to offend uh, the, the subject of it across the street? Um, what do you mean by offend? Did I in any way do something that caused him harm directly? That would cause me to speculate, and I can't do that. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, he's not a victim in the case of the sidewalk being blocked then? 
you're, you're not uh, you're not putting forth that I did anything that. In my opinion, yes, he crossed the street because he couldn't get through here. The group of. You. Uh, do you think? Uh, what makes you believe that you're qualified to speculate as to his intentions? <laughs> That's what I just said. I, I can't speculate to his, what he was thinking, but if you're asking me my opinion, he looked up, saw the group, stopped across the street, which in my opinion is a way for him to be able to continue moving without having to engage the group of people that were blocking the sidewalk. But nobody knows really what was his motivation. Who this been asked and answer? I'll allow him to answer that question. Could you repeat it again? So nobody involved in this case or the investigation knows what his true motivations were? What his motivations were? Yeah, we don't know that, correct? Well, but if you're asking my opinion, yes, then he, he moved because the sidewalk was blocked. What makes you think you're qualified as a speculative to someone else's opinion? This is what has to ask answer. Sir, he said he couldn't speculate. Okay. Right I understand, yes, it's getting circular, sir. Uh, who handled evidence collection in this case? Um, what type of evidence? Uh, say digital evidence. Well, when you ask handle, how do you mean? What was the change? Uh, what was the change structured like as far as how evidence was either taken and then processed within Manchester Police Department? Check was involved as a side question. Uh, well, the, the video evidence of that day was very relevant, the fact that video cameras were there, the fact that the interactions were recorded, so some of the, the video evidence may come into play in a minute, so. Well, I, I think if I understand what he's asking, and I, if I think if I'm understanding what you're saying, that you intend to proffer some video evidence. Correct. So then the issue is, is the government going to challenge the the video in terms of whether or not it has been all the video came from he, he, he would appear what he's if, if I'm under I, I think I understand what the gentleman is saying which is he wanted to know the chain of custody before it was before it was uh, captured the argument being if you're willing to stipulate as to chain of custody, I guess it, 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 that, that takes that out of the issue, and then if we get down to a 901 relevancy standard, I mean, that authentication standard, don't we? Your Honor, I will stipulate that so long as it was in the possession of the Manchester Police Department, there was a valid chain of custody, um, obviously before and after, I can't stipulate those facts. Right, so the only thing you could ask this gentleman is what occurred within the time it was within the hands of the police department. Is that correct, sir? Yes. So he has stipulated that is he has agreed it is a fact that it was validly handled in Ontario. Yes. Okay, so that renders the question to this gentleman unnecessary. You see, because he doesn't it for accountability reasons, shouldn't I be able to find out who just put a name on who was processing the video evidence? But he stipulated that the evidence is taken care of. Now, if there are other proceedings uninvolved in this, that's a different question. The only issue comes to be the reliability of the evidence before the court. I'm not saying that that might not be relevant in some other proceeding if you have some other issue. But for the purpose of the truthfulness of what happened and the accuracy, that is no longer in dispute because of the stipulation by the government. And that's why I'm sustaining the objection. Thank you, sir. stated earlier, you've been in law enforcement 16 years now? With Manchester Police for 16 years. Okay. And I, I imagine during that period of time you've gotten a substantial amount of training? Yes. Okay. Have you been trained into how to write incident reports? Yes. Have you been trained to write accurate incident reports? Yes. Have you been trained to write complete incident reports? Oh. 
your incident report is um, used to refresh your memory at um, time of trial. So as you're writing it, you try to include all the elements of the offense um, to the best of your ability. Okay, all of the elements of the offense. Since you were the arresting officer, were you in charge of figuring out what charges uh, those you arrest get? Um, yeah, I suppose you could say that. Okay, so was it your decision to charge me with uh, both disorderly conduct interfering and disorderly conduct refusal to move? Um, no, you were, at the time you were arrested for um, disorderly conduct refusing to move. Okay, so what prompted uh, the state to introduce an interfering charge? Your Honor, Jeff, Ms. Rolfes. Sir. Um, the relevance, I'd say, is uh, Sergeant Patty being the officer with uh, the most knowledge of the incident being the arresting officer, the primary witness, uh, I'd say it would be very pressing as to whether or not he is aware of what charges are being filed relative to that incident. Counsel? No, I don't see how it's relevant if Sergeant Patty knows what charges are being filed, the ultimate decision on what charges should be brought is made by the state and the state's prosecutor. Not by the arresting officer. All right. I guess that that is a statement that is accurate under RSA 594. And in consequence of that, it asks for information that is beyond the knowledge of this individual. So Sir, RSA 594 is the arrest law. RSA 594 has a segment that says that so long as there's probable cause, the officer can make the arrest. What amounts to is that there is a distinction as to what a, what a prosecutor chooses to file. And that is the purpose behind the arraignment. In consequence of that, you're asking for information that he does not have in his possession. And it is because it is controlled by Chapter 594, I'm going to sustain the objection. Thank you, sir. One of the allegations before the court today is that I interfered with the collection of evidence, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you noted during your testimony that uh, my interference was based on the fact that officers needed to move the group out of the crime scene earlier? Yes, it was failing to comply with a um, verbal lawful order. Well, the interfering, the interfering is a consequence of failing to comply with the lawful order, is that correct? I don't understand what you're saying. What you're saying is by failing, I'm asking if by failing to comply with the lawful order, you are then simultaneously committing the offense of failure to obey the lawful order and interfering. Is that true? Um, I think you get them, I think you're combining the two. Uh, the fact that you were given a lawful order to leave the area of the crime scene and you didn't, that's one offense. And then afterwards, when you fail to move uh, at the point that you were arrested, is a separate offense. So you didn't say during your testimony that I personally failed to leave the crime scene, that I refused that order. You said the group didn't move out of the crime scene, right? Again, I said that you didn't move on verbal request. It was only when we had to, we were physically moving that you appeared to feel the need to move at that point. By you, do you mean the group or me myself? Okay, so I may or may not have been in the group at that time? That's correct. Okay. So is, uh, do you assert that I personally failed to move out of the crime scene in order to do so? Yes, if you were part of that group, yes. But you just said the group did move out of the crime scene. Well, again, we go around and around this. If you're given a lawful order, which is part of what the statute requires, and you didn't move, then you're in violation of, of that particular crime. So are you asserting that despite the group supposedly following the order to leave the crime scene, 
the fact that there was some delay between them being there and being out of the crime scene constitutes uh, interference with the crime scene? Yes, that and the fact that you were given lawful orders prior to that, too, you were given more than one order. Is it reasonable for a person to believe that chalk on a sidewalk is criminal? Your Honor, I'm going to check this out. Calls for speculation. I'll call for a conclusion of law. Sir, well, what is the relevance of what any human being might think? Well, Sergeant Patty is asserting that that was an active crime scene at the time, and whether or not a reasonable person coming upon that scene would believe it to be a crime scene is a factor in whether or not someone should feel comfortable being there or not, or whether or not they feel that they would be lawfully authorized, lawfully authorized to be there. Counsel? All right. I'll just say we strongly disagree with that. This that would simply defeat the purpose of the disorderly conduct statute. That would make it so that at every crime scene there could be a debate as to what, where the crime scene begins and ends. It would eliminate control. It would create the very situation that the statute is designed to protect against. I don't, again, the pending question is about what would a normal, reasonable person think. I don't think Sergeant Patty can answer that question. It calls for clear speculation. All right, well. I would assert that an officer is supposed to be versed in what a reasonable person, how they would and would not react as part of their job in interacting with people so often. The issue is ultimately whether or not it constitutes a crime scene is a matter to be determined in the court. The determination, a dialogue or debate within the confines of such space appears to be inconsistent with the rulings of the New Hampshire Supreme Court with regard to this. So to the extent that you are asking that question for the purpose of justifying the conduct of remaining, it runs contrary to the rulings of the Supreme Court and will sustain the objection. Thank you, sir. So you said that you do try to include all relevant details as they pertain to the law in question when you're writing out your incident report, correct? Yeah, as we may recall, or as I may recall, I'm writing it. Okay. Um, if one of the uh, points of law in question is my proximity to the chalking, would that not be a relevant detail to add into the incident report? The only uh, relevant detail um, that I was aware of at the night, uh, or the time of your arrest, was when you were arrested for failing to move. So are you asserting that the interfering with the crime scene was an offense committed earlier that I was not arrested for at the time? That's correct. Okay. But earlier you did say that you don't remember whether or not I was in that group at the term, time that it was in the crime scene. Correct. I can't specifically say that you were in that group. Okay. police report didn't make note of whether or not I was given a lawful order immediately prior to being arrested, correct? I don't know. Okay. Would you, you like to refer to it? Sure. Okay. 
So does your incident report note whether or not uh, I was given a lawful order immediately prior to being arrested? Well, they haven't yet that uh, after repeated orders by me to keep moving, the crowd had stopped on the sidewalk between Manchester Street and the North parking lot, which is where you were arrested. So it was obvious to me that despite my repeated requests and warnings, the crowd was not going to keep moving. At that time, I instructed officers anyone still standing on the sidewalk could be arrested. Okay. Photograph is one of the ones I submitted to you on pre-trial. Mm -hmm. No, I know Jeffrey wants to show that to the witness. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also have some photographs here. This is from a video frame from one of the. Uh, And this is one of the images from the police station. So, Sergeant Patio, do you recognize the scene? Yes. Okay. Do you remember approximately where it was that the furthest north chalking was? Um, <clears throat> I'd have to say a little closer. Can you bring it a little closer? Sergeant Penny, based on uh, the distance there, um, how long would you say it was between the time that myself got from here to here, if you remember where I was and when I moved? What, what length of time would you say it took? I don't remember. Okay. Was it seconds, minutes? As I said, I, I don't remember. I couldn't offer a guess on that. So it could have been seconds? Yeah, I don't remember. If it was seconds, it would mean that I was immediately complying with the lawful order. Right? Well, it could be sure. 300 sure. seconds. I don't know. I'm going to object to this point between the lack of foundation since he doesn't remember. So, 
So but if he's unable to recall the detail, it makes it difficult for him to answer the question you probably does Okay. Uh, withdrawn. So reports from the other officers who arrested uh, Mr. Nectrib and Mr. Ayer? Uh, I don't believe I have. Okay. Do you recall ordering them to place Mr. Nectrib and Mr. Ayer under arrest? No, at this point, let me check what is the relevance. Um, the relevance is that the three people were arrested at the same time for supposedly the same offense, and I wanted to establish one of the facts, which is that uh, Sergeant Patty was the one who made those uh, ordered those three arrests and effectively made those three arrests. All right, but the sole issue before this court today is your culpability and not the culpability of the other individuals. Okay. Therefore, the question you're asking goes to issues concerning matters that are not before the court at this time. So, because of that, it doesn't meet the 401 relevance standard on the system the objection. Thank you, sir. Civilians gathered at, a, or do you think you could? Do you have any idea how many of the civilians who were gathered there were for the protests as opposed to passerbys? I'm interested in checking it out. No. Okay. So people who were among the group could have been people who just <coughs> arrived on the scene and weren't aware of the earlier arrests. And you, you say that there were people across the street and also behind uh, at the time around that the protest was going on, uh, or right before the arrest? Behind what? Behind where there were people, there were also left in people spread out in fewer concentration across the street. Yes. Okay. And because there were two different areas of people, there was some intermixing between these groups that, uh, you know, one minute somebody might go across the street and another cross back. I don't know that. Okay. So at the times that you were giving off orders to the group to keep moving, uh, how much of a gap would you say there would have been between each order to keep moving when there'd be some sort of resistance to that? I don't know. I suppose it's irrelevant. After the first one, you fail to move. Um, if anything after that is um, playing with house money. We just continue to give you requests and warnings uh, so I couldn't give you a time. Do you recall requesting people? Uh, do you recall requesting specifically that people leave the chalk area of the sidewalk? Yes, so, so they could have uh, pictures taken. Okay. And do you recall people following that order and moving to the point beyond and stopping because they believe they were complying with that order? Well, I've answered this a number of times already. You didn't move on the lawful order, verbal request. It was only when the police officers were actually walking that you decided to move. When I say you, that group. Okay, so not me specifically? Again, I can't say you specifically. Okay. I'm answer that. How long had the lawful order been issued prior to the arrest taking place? The first lawful order to move? No, the, the last one before the arrest was made. I don't know. Could it have been minutes? Well, if we go through this again, it could be you know hundreds of seconds or minutes. I don't know. 
Well, this one is uh, directly relevant because if it had been a minute and some people had been given awful orders and then other people had arrived on the scene within that frame of time, you couldn't expect that they would have known what happened a minute prior, correct? No, no, no. Go check the question. It's our amendment's form. No, I'll check the Black Foundation. Sorry, it's already testified. It doesn't recall. Sir, I'm having a difficult time with that question on the relevance ground. Because I don't recall the officer, the witness, testifying that in that period of time there was any interchange of people. You had established that earlier on there was an interchange that was possible, you can see possibly an interchange of people. So as to the pending question, the objection is sustained. Could the gap of time between the last lawful order being given and the decision to make arrests have been long enough that people could have arrived from quite a considerable distance away. I don't know that. I don't know the time frame. Okay, so it was not immediately prior to issuing the last lawful order that you decided to place people under arrest. Despite your efforts to frame the question differently, I don't know the time frame. I can't help you with that. Is it possible that I was not given the initial lawful orders that you believe were issued to the group? Which, which um, charge are you speaking of? Uh, do you recall? Do you recall the time period immediately following the arrest of Kate Ager? Um, I think I'll be a little more specific. She was the no, one who was arrested on the street corner prior to the, the final three arrests. I'm sorry, I know who she is. I, I don't know what you meant by that question, I guess. It's... Do you recall the events immediately following her arrest? No. Um, could the time frame between uh, that arrest taking place and the arrest of the last, or what do you what do you believe the time frame may have been between that arrest and the next three arrests? Mm -hmm. No, that, that's a, I think that's a fair question because as I understand it, earlier on the officer, uh, the witness was asked when the first lawful order, and I guess I am assuming from your question, you're now asking when that first lawful order was given. Okay, so since he seemed to have some sense of when that first lawful order was given after the arrest of this, this uh, lady on the sidewalk, then I guess I'm going to permit him to answer that question. You can answer the question as to what I understand to be after the arrest of this one individual, you, you issued your first lawful order and the arrest. Uh, I'm not sure that I understood the question that way. Um, the orders were given throughout our interaction with the group of people that they needed to keep moving on the sidewalk. It wasn't one particular time, it was throughout the course of the uh, event. Okay. Well, as I understood his question, the reason I permitted it is he, he said, well, you were asked, wanted to ask about the first lawful order. I thought that's what he was asking. What was the first lawful order given in context of when you were arrested? You made the ultimate arrest. Yeah, no, I believe I answered that. I don't know when that, what, what particular lawful order you're talking about because there were many given throughout the day. I don't have a time frame to say this is when it happened. Uh, Your Honor, I don't know if I can go back to the earlier objection, but if Sergeant Patty is going to testify that the occurrences throughout the day are relevant pending to this case, then I would say that it is all the more relevant that the uh, objection I brought up, the objection that was brought up earlier because of the time of day would then become relevant. Well, I'm not going to consider things that are made two hours earlier. So, again, like I told you, that, that doesn't go to either parties. 
the attackers were concerned about the events immediately surrounding the arrest itself. Uh, so could the could the time frame between Kate Ager's arrest and the final three arrests have been about two minutes? I don't know. I don't know what time she was arrested. Okay. So you don't recall whether it was before or after that time that the law authorities are right, never mind. Do you recall lawful orders being issued within two minutes of the uh, within two minutes of the arrest? Um, again, which arrest are you referring to? My own arrest. Within two minutes, yes, that's reasonable. Okay. At this point, uh, I would like to show the uh, sergeant evidence that was in the discovery, the video evidence that shows some of the initial lawful orders being given immediately following the arrest of Kate. Yeah. I guess. And, as long as they can't prevent the defendant from trying to introduce evidence, mm -hmm. but I, we'll preserve my objection at this point. Oh, that's what we're trying to offer. Well, I guess I'll permit the gentleman to come forward with whatever video projection he has. See if it can be authenticated in the world I don't want.
Surgeon Patty, is it possible to be amongst a group without being part of it? Be like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's able to hear it or make noise? Not exactly. <laughs> is it possible that you could be amongst a, a group that is formed but not be a part of that group? Um, you mean the same cause? I, I don't know. I guess I don't understand the question. I'll throw that question. You stated earlier that you noticed that I was recording uh, throughout the throughout the event. Yes. Okay. And you noticed I had a tripod to stabilize my shot. Uh, or actually, it's a, I had a tripod, correct? Yeah. My recollection is you were holding the tripod. Do you do you understand why someone might hold a tripod or use a tripod in their manner? I really don't know how this has been going on this map before. Okay, I, I, I'm having a hard time with the relevancy. Withdrawn. Was I performing a duty as um, as the member of the free press on that day? We are going to check calls for speculation. Sir, how can you know what's going on in your mind? Good point, I'll withdraw that. Um, is it reasonable to is it reasonable to believe that somebody recording a public event is the press? Objective is cause for speculation as to who, what people serve. I'm going to sustain the objection to that question. Okay. At this point, I have another video, which shows uh, another group moving back, going from behind. This is the immediately prior to the arrest. Right, did I take it? Your Honor, please. Something wants to show the sergeant. Try to get into as evidence on the objection. All right, so let's approach the children. Movement, no. You don't call that movement? No. 
fact, that was after I had already ordered my place to make the arrest. Okay, so you, you don't believe I was moving in this video? No, not consistent with the ordinance. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. No. Thank you, Your Honor. Very brief, I'm redirect. Right. Sergeant Penny, you recall uh, the defendant was wearing any cr uh, credentials or name tags? I don't recall that. Okay. When was the first time you recall, well, straight back, throughout the afternoon we've been heard, heard reference to group or the group. What is your understanding of the term the group? Um, by ordinance definition, it's obviously more three or more people. Um, but there were a group of between 20 and 30 people there throughout the day. I should, not the day, throughout my interaction. Let me see if I can be a little bit more specific. When, when people are, have been asking questions regarding the group and its behavior, which location are you talking about? Which group location? Uh, the group in front of the police station. Okay. And which side of the sidewalk was that? I mean, which side of the street, I apologize. To the east. I'm going to ask you uh, a <coughs> question about moments he was in amongst those numbers of that group in some videos. That first video um, with Sergeant Langdon giving orders. Where was that, sir? Uh, in front of the police station near the uh, corner of Chestnut and Merrimack Street. And that sidewalk area there, do you call there had been shock on that sidewalk area? Yes, there was. And those retaining walls in front of there, there was a chalk on the retaining walls in that front area as well? That's correct. Okay. Are any of the detectives, to your recollection, pictured in that video? Yes. Yeah. Which detectives, do you recall? I saw Detective Hogan. knowledge and belief, when was the first time you recall seeing Mr. Ian uh, amongst the group on the east side of Chestnut Street on the sidewalk area? I, I couldn't say specifically. Okay. Recall if he was present when you issued any lawful order? Well, obviously he was present uh, when Sergeant Langton issued that lawful order. Thank you, sir. No further questions for you at this time. Sir, any further? Uh, no. Okay. Please step down. Please, pursuant to the order of sequestration, do not discuss either your testimony or any other testimony in this matter with any other individual until this matter is concluded. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, there is no further witnesses. Government rests. All right. Uh, the defense would like to call Pete Ayer to the stand. Um, isn't he a, a defendant? He had his trial about two weeks ago now, I believe. In fact, that there's been no ruling, so he has a Fifth Amendment privilege not to testify. Has he been warned by anyone? Of yes. The yes, he's aware of that. I have informed him of that. Well, before he, could you have the gentleman come in and I'd like him to stand there so I can make sure I get it on the record that he's aware of his Fifth Amendment privilege and makes a choice, okay? I have to do that to protect his rights before I can do anything else, all right? So if, you, if you'd like to bring him in, I, I need to make certain inquiry to make sure that the gentleman is, he has rights separate and independent of yours, and I've got to make sure that I honor his rights as well.
Mr. Ayer, before you step up, um, apparently you had a trial a week or two ago, a couple of weeks ago. That's correct. That, that there's been no ruling with regard to that. There is also the possibility, sir, that you have a, um, that in the event of a conviction, you would have the ability to appeal to the Supreme Court that if reversed, there would be a new trial possible other options possible too. So you retain this moment Fifth Amendment privilege. If you testify, anything you say could be used against you in the event that there is a further trial. My obligation is to make sure that an unrepresented party is aware of that possibility and that the individual makes a conscious choice as to whether or not to testify and give up any privilege that they have. And I want to make sure that you were made aware, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to make a choice. Do you wish to waive your Fifth Amendment privilege and testify? Um, I mean, I don't believe an individual can give up their rights, but I would. I don't. I know I'm not going to say. I know my actions that day. I'm confident in what I did, and I don't feel I did anything wrong. So I'm fine proceeding with this and uh, sharing whatever information is asked of me. But, Mr. Eric. The answer you're giving giving is really <coughs> troubling because if you're saying you're not going to give up your rights, then I then you can't testify because coming forward, if you're asserting to me that you wish to invoke your rights, then given the context of this case, the court would have no choice but to honor your rights, and I would not permit you to be called because I would not be honoring your rights. So I've got to have a clear and unequivocal renunciation before I'm going to put you in the position where you may say things that would, uh, that would cause you to, to uh, uh, inculpate yourself. Right, I understand what you're saying, and I'm, I'm fine going ahead, and um, I think it just comes down to a difference maybe of uh, where you guys and myself may uh, believe that the, our rights stem from and then if they in fact can be uh, separated from the individual and I, you know I would say that you know for example no matter where someone is born in North Korea or the, what's the US they have the same rights and so it doesn't matter if the government above them or somebody else says they don't have a certain right to do something, I would just say, so for me to come in here and, and share with you some information, I'm happy to do that, and uh, especially to support my friend, and I don't feel I did anything wrong, so I'm fine right, uh, so, sharing some knowledge. So, so, so notwithstanding any Fifth Amendment privilege you might have, you are willing to answer the questions. Is that correct? Sure. All right, then. Um, will you swear me? What's on there? Can you come forward? Mr. Eric, please remain standing, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of the pains and penalties of perjury? Yep, I try to be truthful with everything I do. Sir, you may be seated. Please give your name and spell it for the record. Uh, my name is Peter Eyre, uh, P E T E R E Y R E. And uh, do, do you recall being in Manchester on June 4th, 2011? Yes, I do. Uh, do you recall being at an event at the Manchester Police Department? Yes, I do. And do you recall being arrested at an event at the Manchester Police Department? Unfortunately, yes. Um, do you recall the time of your arrest, uh, if there were others arrested, uh, and, for what, and for what they may have been arrested for? Yes, there were. I believe there were eight of us arrested that day. Uh, but immediately at the time of your arrest, uh, how many others were arrested? Uh, I believe myself, uh, Charles N. I don't know how you say his last name, and, you, and yourself. Uh, we were kind of uh, we all got arrested uh, around the same time. Uh, and do you recall who uh, ordered the arrest to occur? 
Yes, I believe uh, John Petty uh, issued you arrest order. Okay, so uh, let's back up about 30 seconds prior to the arrest. Do you recall uh, where you were situated in relation to other officers and Mr. Patty? Yeah, I was. Um, I was facing east. I was on the east. Or sorry, I was facing south. I was on the east side of Chestnut Street, um, close to the corner. Uh, I guess the northeast corner there, and uh, I was facing a number of individuals who worked for Manchester Police Department, and uh, we were on the sidewalk and. You know, there's a, a parking lot that I guess they call the North Parking Lot to my left, and <coughs> that, that was the general area. How insistent were the officers around you that you uh, keep moving in the time prior to your being arrested? Um, I mean, in the, in the immediate 30 seconds before, or I mean, the, I would say that uh, immediately prior to being arrested, myself and everyone else had pretty much. Uh, had ceased moving we had moved off an area that they had called a crime scene that had chalk on it and uh, that was the order that they had uh, ostensibly communicated to us before so we I felt personally I can't speak for others that I had satisfied the request so we I was sitting I was engaged in conversation with some individuals who work for Manchester Police Department and that's when the order had been given uh, to arrest them. Do you recall uh, when Sergeant Patty approached whether or not he gave an order to the individuals to move? No, I believe what I remember hearing is, um, again, I'm facing south, and so from this direction, uh, John Patty walking up and saying, arrest them, you know, and that's when uh, the arrests were initiated. I didn't hear John Patty communicate anything for us to continue to move at that point. So you recall his communications being with other officers and not with uh, civilians on the scene? Correct. Okay. Are you aware that uh, some of uh, the some of the arrests, some of it was filmed and captured by various uh, angles of footage? Yes, I am. Okay. I'd like to present the witness. Permission to approach? Take on the audition to approach. Do you recognize the scene? Yes, I do. Can you tell the court where it is? Okay, so this is, uh, this is looking east across Chestnut Street. This is the Manchester Police Department, and yeah, that's the east sidewalk, so there had been some, uh, I was arrested. Uh, well, I guess we can get to that later if you like. This is Manchester, <laughs> looking at the police department. Uh, so where do you recall most of the chalking was located? Um, I believe most of the chalk, again, I didn't participate in any chalking, but I, I believe most of it was on, there's a, this is a retaining wall, so some of it was further down, some of it was on a sidewalk, um, and I believe some had been on these columns a little bit closer to the entrance of the Manchester Police Department. They present you with a photograph taken by uh, Manchester Police of some of the chalking. Okay. And uh, do you recognize that the pictures show similar uh, areas? Yes, they do. <coughs> okay. And then here's an image taken from one of the cameras filming down the street. Do you recall this scene? Yes, I do. Okay, what's going on in that scene? Um, in this scene, I am being placed in handcuffs by. Um, Thomas Gonzalez of the Manchester PD. There's other officers around talking to other individuals who happen to be present at the event that day. Okay, Mr. Air, based on these two images that you have in front of you of the arrest taking place, as well as where the furthest north chalking was, uh, could you mark the areas with post-it notes, probably either above or below the ones that are already there? Where you believe those two events are located on this diagram? That where the, the chalk and the right the arrest right. location happened. The chalk in here. This chalk here, I would say. And you can also use uh, like markers on the sidewalk. Yeah, I right? don't object at this point. Seems like suggesting testimony. That's where it put the mark. 
Right. Uh, so you're free to put it where I was, Sorry, I was just asking for clarification on the two marks that he had. The chalk and the air. Okay. I mean, the chalk, I would say, is, I mean, was from like here back. And again, we stopped. I stopped after I had felt I had satisfied the request to move off the crime scene, so I stopped past the last of the chalk, which, you know, I guess. I guess it looks like it's in between where these two bushes are. So right here, it looks to be the last of the chalk. So I guess I just replicate whoever put that one there. Okay. And the arrest location. I mean, again, I was I was um, past. I was on the, the north side of the chalk when I was arrested. So um, you know, I'd say somewhere in, in here, I was arrested. So I guess I just double that one up as well. Okay. Did you feel that in the uh, shortly before you were arrested that you were committing a crime? No. No further questions. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Mr. Thank you. you said that you described yourself as a friend of uh, Garrettian. That's correct. Okay. How long have you guys been friends for? Um, I don't know. I don't know when we first met. Probably met at an event at some time in Fort Fest. Yeah. I don't know, I'd say like a couple years or less, maybe, a few years. Okay. We've been discussing a, a group this afternoon, individuals located on the east side of the uh, Chestnut Street, in the sidewalk area. Do you recall seeing Garrett Ian amongst those individuals? Yes. Okay. Do you recall hearing Sar uh, Sergeant Langdon order people to move from the sidewalk as they're blocking uh, pedestrian tra traffic, setting up ordinance? Um, I can't specifically say that I recall Sergeant Langdon. I know him by sight, but I, that day I didn't know him, and I don't recall if he himself I don't recall him verbalizing that word, but I know that it was communicated by somebody where he mentioned Mr. Petey Badge. Okay. You, re you recall hearing that? You recall hearing it? How many times do you recall hearing it, roughly? Um, I don't know, a handful of times. Okay. And this was over the course of the entire length of the sidewalk. And, you know, as we moved back, we, we never. The rationale for us moving again to be off the crime scene was so detectives could take pictures of the crime scene, sure. and I, we never impeded them. We continued. To, I continued to move, and um, again felt that the, re the request had been satisfied, which is why I stopped where I stopped. You referenced that you were at one point. I'm just going to refer to it as a crime scene, just called chalk. You were standing on the chalk at one point, or the chalk area. Your head in chalk? Yeah, I mean, throughout the day, I'd, I my intention was to have conversations with people there and share ideas. So I had been on different parts of the sidewalks, the steps, entry to the police department. So I, at times, yes, I'm sure I was on some chalk. Okay. And when you heard the when you heard the officers issue the order to move from what they're what they're calling the crime scene, you understood what they meant. Well, I know there had some other folks have raised questions about uh, what in fact was a crime scene because again it's non-toxic children's chalk <laughs> the best of my knowledge that was used which doesn't damage doesn't create any permanent damage so I was also a little perplexed with the order to move off a crime scene. But you know what they were referring to when they said they're going to photograph chalk correct? Yes. Okay. When you were in that area do you call Garrett Ian being with you at that point? Um, I mean, generally, once the uh, once the order did to move and uh, Manchester Police Department employees lined up and, and walked us north, um, I really didn't have much. Uh, I wasn't paying attention necessarily to who I was standing next to. I was just con trying to continue to have a conversation with people wearing Manchester PD badges because, again, I was there just to share ideas about um, some actions that 
some of the colleagues had made and the lack of what I felt were lack of repercussions. So I, I, I didn't know if he was next to me or beside me or in front of me, behind me throughout the day. I just know that when I was arrested, he was nearby at that point. Okay. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions for you. Direct examination. Yes, if I could please. Um, at some point during the day, did the sidewalk become locked to pedestrian, uh, pedestrian traffic? Yes. When was that? I would say after uh, Kate Auger was arrested, um, the police soon after uh, lined up and ordered and essentially corralled everybody in front of them and then ordered everyone to walk north, which you know, I would then say made it difficult for uh, somebody to just walk down the sidewalk with that seat of the So the sidewalk did not become blocked pedestrian traffic until uh, Manchester police decided to close that area and walk everyone off. That's correct. I saw, I saw people walk by throughout the day. I didn't hear anybody complain. And, and in fact, I know there were people across the street inquiring. I watched other video that was captured from that day. There were people across the street inquiring what's going on over there. At this point, I'm going to object. Sounds like we're getting the wrong hearsay. Sir? Well, this is a Sir, hearsay. It's an out of court statement according to Rule 801. Used to prove the truth of the matter, sir. So he is going to testify as to what other people told him for the truth of the matter, sir. Why is that not the admissible under Rule 801 and 802? Okay, I didn't ask specifically as to what other people were saying. All right, so you concur that his objection is well funded. So right, but I don't believe he was objecting to my question. I believe he was objecting to Mr. Harris' testimony. That's correct. Okay, because yes. only the answers are objection. Okay. And that component of the answer would be objection that's on the sustain. Okay. Um. Did the police make any effort to close the crime scene besides giving verbal orders? All right. Object at this point is outside the scope of cross examination. Sir, the question is it cross examination, a redirect examination is limited to the items brought up on cross examination. I don't recall, if you have a specific question that you can lead me to that Mr. Mueller said that opened the door to that. Do you have one? I well, I'd say it's uh, just the fact that it was speaking generally to uh, what they were ordered to do. I'd say speaking to the environment that they were around in and uh, the visual elements, I wanted to know whether or not the police had done anything to inform Mr. Ayer additionally that he had to leave. I think it speaks to the heart of that matter. Well, I, I don't believe it has been that, that that falls within the scope of redirect examination within a limited nature of the cross-examination. So I'm going to sustain the objections being with on beyond the scope. <coughs> no further questions. No. no further questions, John. Sir, please go back outside. Please do not discuss your testimony with any other witness. You're under the court order of sequestration. Does that conclude your witnesses? Uh, that does, Your Honor. Uh, well, just, just a moment. Is there a redirect exam? We do, uh, excuse me, is there a rebuttal witness? There are no rebuttal cases. No. Then the evidence is closed. Is there argument? Um, could I enter the video into evidence that I showed Officer Patty? It's one of the check that was the time we entered. Well, sir, the, the, the evidence is closed at this point. You, do you wish to make argument? Do you, I, I was going to take the matter under advisement because there is an issue. There are actually two issues that are raised, and I was going to give the parties the opportunity to address the issues if you wanted to do it by memorandum. But I'll listen to argument if the parties wish to make an argument. Uh, sir, do you, do you want to make argument at this point, or do you want to, I was going to, you raised two issues as I understood what you did. Issue number one had to do with the issue of movement when the police would walk up. There, I understand that you have a separate issue as to whether or not you were actually present, but assuming that you were, there was testimony from officer, uh, or from, from the, the state's witness, that 
people were not moving when verbally ordered to do so, only when there was an advance. And there's an issue about whether or not that is compliance with the lawful order or not. The second <coughs> issue that you raised, that was the result of the cross-examination, had to do with press freedom. Um, as to whether or not you were there to memorialize what was going on and whether or not that gave you a separate and independent right for your actions. And I was going to allow the parties to address both those issues by memo. Um, if that is acceptable to the parties, is that acceptable? Um, on that, Your Honor, I would point out that when I was asking the question specifically about uh, my freedom of the press, I was going to tie that into the incident which was ruled irrelevant about two oh. hours earlier. So at All the right. time that I was arrested, I actually didn't even have a camera running. I was just there to observe. Okay, so, so then I misinterpreted your question. You still leave that one remaining issue, and I want to take it under advisement because I cannot believe lawful order. This comes from a the model penal code, the model penal code has been in effect for more than 50 years. This law has been in effect in this state since 19, 1971 it was introduced, 1972 it passed, becoming effective in November, November 1st of 1973. Um, it was once declared unconstitutional, a case called State versus Nickerson, but this is, this is throughout the United States of America, other states have adopted this. And the issue about whether or not verbal compliance, compliance, non-compliance with a verbal order is an issue. It appears there is some movement. There is a separate issue about whether or not the gentleman was actually present when some of the orders were issued. And I will give the parties time. Now, for reasons that I frustrate me, uh, my computer has been down here and I have not been able to do research from materials that came in from last week. And I have no idea when I'm going to get my computer back. Uh, or my computer access back. Because of that, folks, uh, I will give you each until the 9th day of December to submit memos on that issue. And again, because it is difficult to do the kind of legal research necessary. I do not anticipate that anything would be heard before Christmas. I just want to warn you, I don't want you to have any untoward expectations uh, as to immediacy, given the difficulty of this of all of us with the issues of being able to access cases from across the United States of America because of our Lexus Nexus and uh, legal research capacity is being compromised. All right, so I will take the matter under advice. Thank you very much. Please rise. Thank you, folks. Uh, Bradley Jardis here, former law enforcement officer. What is a lawful order? A lawful order is defined by uh, the disorderly conduct statute uh, in 644.2, and um, specifically the disorderly conduct statute says if you violate the criminal code or Title 21, which is the motor vehicle code, and you are given any order to stop doing it, that that is a uh, lawful order for the purposes of the disorderly conduct statute. In this particular case, the lawful order was that people move so a crime scene can be filmed uh, or documented. The recording is going to inside the courtroom. Well, I put a notice in for the I put a notice in for the whole courthouse. Oh, you did. Okay, yeah. I'll have to just verify. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll check. Yep. Thank you. So, I mean, this, this particularly will hinge on the fact of whether or not it was actually a crime scene, which, which it isn't, because if you read the criminal mischief statute, it says there has to be damage. There's a case from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that says specifically that chalk isn't damaged. So the, this could come down to them investigating a, an ordinance violation, which isn't a crime, and the stat, uh, an ordinance is a violation level offense. And I believe the uh, disorderly conduct 
statute specifically says crime scene, so it wouldn't have been a crime scene. Hmm. I think I just want to point out. I think this judge was extremely fair, and um, I think he uh, has a very good temperament. So, so it's not a lawful order. Anything that a police officer utters from his mouth. Correct. Correct. But so, but what the judge pointed out is the time and place to question it is not on the side of the road. The time and place to question it is is here in court. And I, I think he's going to be found so not guilty. Excuse me. Oh, so that video um, is only for inside the proceedings. It can't be done within the courthouse. So, so no freedom of the press is what you're saying. Not within the courthouse right now. It's, it's directed only to the courtroom. And, and at least the, he's honest about it. And the threat is. We, there's no threat. We can just if, you, if there's any other questions, you go to the clerk's window. Maybe they can help you. I'm just trying to interpret. Uh, the motion that so you there's no threat. So there's no consequence. So if I keep recording, well, it's against it's it's against the court's order. So you're talking about contempt of court, then? Is that right? All I'm advising you is that the recording was for the proceeding only in the courtroom, not within the courthouse walls. Have you seen the notice that I that I put in? I mean that that was approved, right? The notice said the whole courthouse. Yeah. Sir. I'm just explaining. No, I'm just explaining. I'm explaining that if there is a question, you can go to the clerk's window. I don't have any questions. I mean, it seems like you guys are the ones with the issue that have a problem with free, the free press. I mean, this, sir, this isn't. It's not open for discussion. All I'm saying is that motion was filed for inside the courtroom. If you want to film a video, you can't just have to, you can't have to go to the window. Is that right? He can't. Why not? Only the judge can order a contempt arrest. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, imagine you're you're a bad guy. I think you're trying to just do your job and you know do what you're told. And I'm sorry if we started off on the wrong foot. Just wondering how you feel about what happened today. I have no comment for you. How's that? Fair enough. It's fair enough. What are you off to do right now? Work. Yeah, you're on the do uh, on the clock today. Yeah. Do you get paid overtime even though you're on the clock? I'm on the clock now. Oh, so as soon as the court's over, you're back on the clock. Right. So you just. Uh, Going back to the car, gonna hit the streets on foot. Um, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. All right. Wish you the best. Thanks. No. Uh, the thing he might be judging it by. What were you charged with? I was charged with two counts of disorderly conduct. One was interfering with an investigation, and the other was refusing to move. And I tried to ask Sergeant Patty on the stand how if one constituted the other. Like, yeah. in, in doing one, was I doing the other? And he wasn't very clear on that. And the criminal mischief statute says damage, and if it rains, it's going to go away. So, I mean, it's a, they're going to have to change the law if they want to enforce it this way. It's not illegal. So right. this is your first time pro se anything? Uh, I've taken a rolling stop to trial before. So that was a little bit of practice for this, but this is the first time I've had evidence and questions and all that stuff it wasn't just totally on the fly. Nice. So what kind of, like, preparation was it worth doing? And Definitely worth doing. Shire mock trial. We got together, practiced the case, had witnesses. So uh, I got to go through it. Especially, it was good help to have Bradley, who actually was an officer, be able to come back with uh, the sort of smart ass remarks that an officer would. But I was drinking. I was drinking at the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just like an officer might be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool, man. So any, uh, where's the best place to find more info and uh, to follow up on this? Uh, on the whole chalking eight case, I'm sure cop blocks where uh, all the different links are. Uh, I've been covering my case, especially at freeconquer.org and uh, all the trials I've been able to make it out to. I'm working on uh, some footage from Wesley's that I got. And uh, also, yeah, any of the other ones coming up. A day Moses is coming up in two days, three days. So where are we at? What the judge, do you have to turn in a memo now? Is that, is uh, I've that? been asked to submit a memo of law based on the legal points that he outlined. Uh, so I'm pretty, pretty much going to bring up again all of the points that I brought out that I feel Patty gave I don't know responses for a lot of them. Those are important factors of the case, such as how long the lawful order had been issued before they made the arrest. So there's case law to back that up, so I think citing all that stuff is what will get me the A-plus on that one. Sergeant Patty admitted several times that he didn't know if you were part of the group. Like, he admitted it right. several times. He didn't know. I mean, and he, he contradicted himself left and right. I mean. Right, to commit a crime. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.